What's up guys, I am Andrew and this is Motorcycles Off-Road. If you're interested in the right tires for your Honda 300L or how we got to this video about gearing, check out our previous video where I talk about tires and their role in de-gearing your bike. And once again, I want to give a big thank you to all my friends who have subscribed, passing 7,000 subscribers and about 1 million views in only 8 months. This is amazing and I sincerely thank you guys and all your support. You guys have truly been awesome. So I did mention in the last video, adding new tires to your 300L can rob you of precious torque and and we need that torque for off-road. But gearing can be complicated, so I'm going to try to make this simple. And in this specific scenario, dealing with the 300L, we'll use general rules here to apply to this bike specifically. So that way I can make the explanation more brief and that anyone who follows will have a good understanding of what they need for their specific needs for their motorcycle. So don't worry, I got your back. If there's anything that you don't understand or you have a specific question, put it in the comments below. My goal will be to answer every comment to give you guys an answer within a timely matter. Okay, so a good rule to go by on the Honda 300L is every tooth in the rear sprocket is going to give you about 2% torque and 2% loss of top speed. Also keep in mind the Honda 300L's top speed is about 85 miles per hour or 136 kph. So that's not a huge loss in top speed and we'll end up using this number later. But unfortunately most of the good tires out there you're going to be adding size to the rear tire adding 10 millimeters of tire size which is the most common situation with something like a Dunlop D606 will result in a 6% loss loss of torque. To combat this, we'll need to upgrade the rear sprocket for at least three teeth. You could also keep the same chain and take one tooth off the front sprocket, going from a 14 to a 13, but I do not recommend this, and I'll explain why further in the video when we come to that part. And keep in mind, these three teeth are minus one. This is just to bring the bike back to stock. But if you're anything like me and you do a lot of off-road, you're going to want more torque, so therefore you're going to want to add even more teeth to the rear. Now, unless you take your bike on the freeway a lot and you travel at high speeds off then let's say 70 miles per hour or 117 kph then you will not care about the loss of top speed all that much because the loss will be insignificant so let's look at some simple charts to better explain i myself is a visual person so in my videos i also like to give visual representations of the points i'm trying to convey firstly here is a 14 inch front and a 43 inch rear and this is what we're talking about to bring the bike back to stock with the taller tire the stock gearing is 1440 so as you see an increase in seven percent which will mitigate the minus about six percent you're going to lose from the tire now this is variable guys because tire sizes are very let's say interesting or duplicitous to say the least basically what i'm saying is a lot of times tires are measured by the lug pattern and as you wear the tire down this percentage is going to change so just keep that in mind when you look at these numbers it might not be exact but if we're torque percentage is off by one percent we're not going to feel that or even notice it but what i recommend for most people is to go to a 1445 why because of dunlop and similar tires you're going to get back to stock and then you're also going to add another five percent torque which once again the loss on top speed is going to be insignificant your top speed will go down from previously mentioned 85 miles per hour to about 80 miles per hour and 128 kilometers per hour that will now be your new top speed so still plenty good enough going around, but I wouldn't want to do long, extensive freeway distance at this level because you will be in a higher RPM, of course. But this is a good performance gain, especially when you think that you're also adding a tire at the same time, which is going to give you a lot more grab to the ground. And now you're adding a lot more torque. Plus, when you put a new tire on, you already have the wheel off the bike. I can't remember what the sprocket was, maybe 10, 12 bolts. And then you just pop the new sprocket on. Now, keep in mind these setups, you will need to change the chain, but replacing the chain and sprocket can be a huge upgrade. And here's why. One thing I'd say to go with is an aluminum sprocket, which is great because less rotational mass. The bike just feels more snappy. And then the chain. The chain from Han is not bad. It's a standard O-ring, though it can be better. I would search for an X-ring. Now, X-rings do cost a bit more. And mine, I think I usually get an X-ring around the range of $80 to $120. But the X-rings have the added benefit of not robbing you of horsepower. A quick basic rundown is you have standard chains, which are free movement. They're great, but they stretch and they wear out very quick. Then you have O-ring chains, which the o-ring technology is very good it's sealed lubrication they last very long they generally don't stretch as much then lastly you have x-ring or some form of x-ring depending on what proprietary version the company offers and these give you all the benefits of the o-ring but also don't have as much resistance as the o-ring so therefore give you a performance gain right off the bat from your standard o-ring on the motorcycle itself i personally swear by x-rings they don't ever break they hardly ever stretch they're great chains so now you have a chain that gives less resistance a sprocket 
rocket that's much lighter, more torque, more grip on the ground. Now these mods alone will completely change the tone of your Honda 300L. They will change this bike from, okay, this is a pretty good dual sport to, wow, this thing's kind of like a weapon off-road, just ripping through stuff. Now, some people will tell you, well, the luminous rocket will wear out a lot quicker. Well, it can, but not really. Simply put, yes, aluminum is softer metal, but rear sprockets wear out so much slower than a front sprocket. Each tooth contacts the chain far less, and also you added more teeth, which will compound the situation of them wearing out slower. Remember I said I don't like to take the teeth off the front, which gives you the same situation as adding three onto the rear? Well, you see, this is because the front sprocket is 14 teeth. Therefore, at any given distance, each tooth on that front sprocket sees the chain at about three times more contact than the rear sprocket. So whenever you shrink the front sprocket, you actually compound this situation. So because of that, I like to keep the front sprocket the same, keep it steel, and add a big aluminum to the rear. I think it's the best of all situations. Also, something to note, when you go a bit farther off a of stock, like I have, you will start to notice your speedometer is off. A simple fix is you go to Speedo Healer and you get part number SHV4 and SHH08. You can find them online, you can find tons of simple videos to install it, but honestly, it's just two plugs into your wiring harness and one plug into the module, and then a simple programming that's on a piece of paper. Super easy, and then you can completely calibrate your Speedo to whatever you need. There's even an app to get it down to the exact number. Okay, so now let's talk about what I run from stock. So I run a 14 front and a 49 rear, which is a much taller rear sprocket, and in general would give me 18% over stock, but since I was running an AC10, which is 10 millimeters above stock, and now a D606, which is also 10 millimeters above stock, which means I'm only adding roughly 12% more torque to my bike and losing that on top speed, which I'm fine with and I love. So basically my first gear used to go from zero to 15 miles per hour. Now it goes from zero to 13. You don't really notice it there, right? But my second gear is amazing. It's where it's at. But my second gear is going from five miles per hour to about 28, 30 miles per hour in the full rev range. And with the added torque, that means in most technical stuff, I can just sit in second gear and rip through it. The only time I need to go up into third is when there's openings, big open spaces when I need to increase my speed. And you could almost come to a standstill with this gearing setup in second gear and the bike will not stall out. It'll just lug. This is great for hill climbs. And for me, I love this setup. I got used to riding this way and it just really molds to the way I like to ride. Now with that, of course, I am losing 12% of my top speed of this motorcycle, but I don't use this bike for long freeway travels. That's why I have my Tenere. So for me, this is perfect. So just for reference, as I said before, if you minus one from the front and add three to the rear, it's basically the same situation that is adding six to the rear. So for most people, I think with one of the tires I mentioned in the previous video, the best scenario is a 45 or a 46 tooth rear. I believe you're going to see immediate noticeable performance, especially if you do the lighter sprocket, the X ring chain, the tires all at once. You're going to jump on the bike and be like, man, this is this is a whole nother bike. <laughs> Night and day different. Also, if you need to find out exactly how many links you need, I just always buy a 120 link chain and I cut it to size. Uh, you can go to this website here. Remember the stock is 1440. Type in what you want and it'll tell you exactly how many links you need. So that is gearing and what gearing can do for you. I hope you guys are still here and you can benefit from this of course. I want my subscribers to watch this video and walk away with some general understanding of this if you didn't know anything because we can agree it's always beneficial to have more of an understanding of the inner workings of your motorcycle and how things affect your bike so that this way you can really dial it into your own personal use. I mean, after all, that's one of the greatest things about the 300L. It's so modular and it's an inexpensive motorcycle that we can kind of tailor it to exactly what we need and still be under the $12,000 price range that some of these KTMs and these other bikes are coming in at. But that is all I have for you guys today. And look for Friday's video, which is going to be my top five mods on the Honda 300L in order in which I think you should do them to get the best bang for your buck, the best performance on your motorcycle. And once again, just thanks guys. Thanks for all the support. I'm sure if you've done YouTube, you know, growing a channel, making these videos, this stuff's not easy. It takes a lot of editing. It takes a lot of time out of your personal life and you really have to enjoy it to do it. And I enjoy it, but then also seeing all the positive feedback and how fast this channel has grown gives me so much more inspiration. It makes me feel so much better about this. So you guys are just giving me so much positive energy and making me feel great inside. And I just really want to thank you for that. So if you have watched this long, let me know in the comments below. I'll be sure to throw you one of those hearts and stay safe out there, guys. My name is Andrew. This is Motorcycles Off-Road. Thanks guys.